Ah, uh, spring vacation, <laughs> summer vacation. Yep, they're both coming. Are you looking for ways to keep your kids busy? You know, encouraging children to craft and create is something all of us can do. And we have a few ideas to help you do just that. I'm Kim. And I'm Chris. And you're watching The DIY Dish. Welcome everyone to another episode of the DIY Dish. You know, spring vacation is upon us and before you know it, summer will be here. Oh, wow. And if you're like us with little ones at home or even if you have children, grandchildren coming to visit, you might be looking for some ideas on getting them involved in some fun projects. You know, crafting with children is near and dear to our hearts sure. as we were former <laughs> elementary school teachers and we're both now moms. And we've seen firsthand, as we're sure most of you have, that teaching children new skills not only leads <laughs> to a great time being spent together, yes. but it also really does something for their self-confidence and they get excited for learning. Last year at this time, we introduced our summer series for kids DVD. This DVD soon went out to a lot of homes, yep. and after some great feedback, we decided to offer it once again. The projects are designed for kids ages 3 through 12, and they're broken down into age-appropriate versions of each craft project. The projects have also been had some fun themes, like yeah. being in the garden, showing your patriotism, being outside in nature, and even camping. We even heard from grandmas who created a special grandma camp last year with these ideas. How fun! So for today's episode, <laughs> we thought we'd switch gears a little bit and share with you a clip from that <laughs> DVD so that you can start crafting right away with the kids today. this week. <laughs> so the simple garden apron we'll be demonstrating is so versatile and very, very simple to make. Yeah. It's made from an old placemat, mm -hmm. and it's the perfect project for the beginning <laughs> sewer. And it's also going to get the whole family pretty excited about being outside again. So without further ado, we present to you Making the Child's Garden Apron from the Summer Series for Kids DVD. Hi again, we're ready to do project number three for our gardening theme, and that is we've got to make those garden aprons so that you're ready to work out in the garden. Now, Chris, if we're going to go outside, there's one thing I need. What's that? My floppy hat. Oh, well, of course. Do you have a floppy <laughs> hat? <laughs> now I can get to work on okay. those garden aprons. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be in the right frame of mind, That's right? right? Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. so here's what you're going to need. This is a simple, <laughs> simple sewing project that I bet is going to be perfect for you beginners. Now for you younger ones, have an adult make this apron for mm -hmm. you and then you get to decorate it in a little while. Yeah. But if you're a little bit older and ready to sew, then this <laughs> is going to be a great project for you to do today. All you're going to need, love the hat Kim, <laughs> is a placemat. <laughs> you can pick these up at any store, right? Yeah. You might even have one already at your house to use. So go ahead and um, place that in front of you and find the center point of your placemat. And all I did to do that was I folded it in half this way. Yeah. And place the pin right there. Now I'm going to take a yard and a half of ribbon, a wide ribbon. This happens to be an inch and a half. And I'm going to do the same thing and fold it in the middle, find my center point and place a pin just okay. like that. From there, I'm going to match up my pins. I'm going to match the top ribbon with the bottom of the placemat. Let's hold that up just a little bit. Okay. There we go. Here we go. So now I've placed um, the center of my ribbon to the center top point of my placemat. Just like that. Okay, now I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine. This is going to be my sash going across my middle. And so I want to sew on both sides of the ribbon all the way down the placement. Should we place more pins in there so it doesn't move anywhere? I think that's a great idea. If you want to place more pins in there, which is going to help you keep that straight line, you go ahead and do that. That is a really good idea. Okay. Okay, now I take it over to my sewing machine and I'm going to place it underneath the presser foot and find the point of where I want to place my needle, making sure that I am just on the inside edge of my ribbon. Okay, and I'm actually going to place uh, my stitch as a simple zigzag stitch on the sewing machine. If you need help with that, make sure and ask a parent. Yes, you know what a zigzag, zigzag. stitch is? 
<laughs> zigzag, just like that. Okay, and I'm going to press down my presser foot. And I'm going to stop right there because you know what it's important to do next? is It's called a back stitch. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes people refer to it as back tacking. Mm -hmm. So there's a great little button on my machine which I will press and it will make... And if you're not sure where that. that is on your sewing machine, make sure and ask an adult and That's they'll let right. you know. Yes. All right, so I've just backstitched a few stitches and it's going to make it nice and secure and hold it real tight for me to uh, stitch the rest of my ribbon. So go ahead and go forward again. I'm just gently gliding my uh, placemat through the machine. I notice I'm not pushing it. I'm just simply letting it glide and I came to a pin. So make sure and remove that pin okay. and continue sewing. And keep your hands away from that needle. Definitely. Okay, I'm getting to this point and I need to um, make sure and backstitch because I'm at the end. And there we go. I simply remove it from there. And notice there's this flap still on the ribbon. So I have to go back and now stitch that side of my ribbon down. So I'm going to place it again, find the place where I want to make sure uh, to place my needle, and again with the zigzag stitch I'm going to move forward. Oops, stop after a few, back stitch or back tack. There we go, my needle's up and now I'm ready to move forward again. Again gently gliding my placemat through the machine. Keeping your hands away. <laughs> yep, notice how far I away will my hands. I always say that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make sure I've gotten to my end. I'm going to back tack a little bit and move forward and up and out. There we go. Cut my threads. And here we now have the ribbon lining the top of the placemat. So we're actually going to turn this upside down so that you can see it a little bit better from your view. All right, so here we have the placemat. Again, the ribbon's along top. I go ahead and take the bottom of the placemat and I'm going to fold it approximately one inch from the very top of my apron. Now there's this nifty little sewing tool out there called a sewing gauge. And this little sewing gauge will help you in finding the mark that you want to place your uh, bottom of the placemat at. So I'm going to do it at one inch. Now if you don't have a sewing gauge, that's okay. Go ahead mm -hmm. and get out one of your school rulers and find the one inch mark and that's it'll be right. just fine. Exactly. So I've lined up my arrows here and I know that this is the one inch mark over here on this side and the one inch mark over here. Oh, we better move that down a little, Kim, because that's not the one inch mark. Oh. There we go. And now we have an exact placement and we're going to simply put a straight pin on each side. One straight pin here one straight pin there. Then I'm going to take it back to my sewing machine and with that zigzag stitch again, remember zigzag, zigzag, we are going to stitch down uh, each side of the apron. All right, so I'm taking it back to the machine and I'm going to begin sewing. Remember what do I want to do? I want to make sure and back stitch, back stitch because it's going to secure my apron together. Okay. I'm at the end, so I backstitch. Move forward a cup a few more and take it out of my machine, just like that. Okay. okay. Then you're gonna repeat that on the second side, uh -huh. and you'll have one giant pocket. But if you want more than one pocket, what yes. are we going to do? We're going to have to find the center point. Yeah. So go ahead and fold that down the middle. This is after each side has been sewn. Yes. And simply place a pin right there in the middle. And now I know the line exactly where to uh, sew down the middle. Now if you want to, you could take a ruler and place that ruler right there Take a pencil to mark it, and now you know the exact line you want to stitch down. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and begin my stitching. Be sure to remove that pin. Yes, we don't want to catch the pin. Back stitch and forward. Keeping those hands away. <laughs> Gently gliding. Yep. Yeah. And back stitch again. All right, pretty easy. Now we have two pockets. There we go. If I wanted to make more pockets, what do you think I would do? <laughs> Kim, why don't you tell us? <laughs> I think you would divide it into three sections. Is yes, that right? <laughs> or four sections. So you can you make, can make as, as many pockets as, you want. as you'd like. Let's show the, some of the okay. finished ones. Here's a finished one where it's got the two pockets. So it's perfect for your little tools to have out. And of course those seeds. That's right. And for you little ones, if um, an adult makes this apron for you, you can have fun painting and decorating your apron. Take a little acrylic paint and your paintbrush and paint a really pretty scene along your apron. Here we have all of our seed packets ready to go and you're ready to have a ton of fun working in the garden. So take it away kids. Well, that was fun to watch yeah. again. Oh my goodness, I think it's time we got to get the kids <laughs> sewing again. Well, there's some really fun projects to make with scout groups, youth organizations, sewing classes, and a lot more. There's yeah. some fun stuff in there. Absolutely. And we'd love to hear what <laughs> you are doing to craft more with your children. Yeah. So be sure to post on our blog at thediydish.com or add your photos to our <laughs> Facebook or Flickr pages. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> we hope you felt that creativity was served. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.